Hi guys and welcome to this 12th video in the But How Do It Know companion video series. Now in the last video uh, we looked at the RAM and we've completed uh, the RAM circuitry on our project board. Before moving uh, forward to the next major component in our CPU which is going to be the ALU, we're going to be looking today at a couple of more uh, logic gates. So the material that we're going to be covering today is from a chapter called More Gates on page 69 of the book. If we pull up uh, the table uh, that we have on page 71 of the book, we can see uh, the truth values for uh, the NAND gate and the AND gate, which we've already seen. And uh, we're introducing here the truth tables for the OR gate and the exclusive OR gate, or XOR for short, uh, gates, which we will be studying more closely um, today. So the truth table for an OR gate is quite simple. If A and B are both false, um, the output of the OR gate is false, or else it is true. So the OR gate will return true if A or B is true, or both are true. The exclusive OR gate is almost the same. Uh, in, in As with the OR gate, it will, re will return false if both inputs are false. It would also return true if one or the other input uh, is true, but it will return false if both uh, inputs are true. Uh, and this is where it differs from the regular OR gate. We're going to uh, see a bit further that uh, OR gates and exclusive OR gates uh, are very useful in uh, constructing uh, some, some circuitry inside the ALU. So if we look more concretely at how to build an OR gate uh, based on what uh, on the parts that we know so far, right? Because if you remember, uh, the idea is to show how we can build uh, everything using only NAND gates. So if we build on components that we already know, uh, we uh, automatically know that we can build those using uh, NAND gates. So to build an OR gate, you need uh, two uh, NOT gates and one NAND gate. So you connect each of your inputs A and B to a different NOT gate, connect the outputs of both, the, both NOT gates into the NAND gate, and you have built uh, an OR gate. Now if you want to build a next OR gate, uh, it's a bit more complicated. You will need five uh, gates to do it, two NOT gates and three NAND gates. So this is how it goes. Connect A and B each to a different NOT gate. Uh, this will yield uh, the, con the, the connection points C and D from uh, the diagram. Then you will be connecting A and NOT B or D to one of the NAND gates. You will be connecting B and NOT A or C to another NAND gate. And you will take the outputs of both those NAND gates, E and F on the diagram, and connect them to your third NAND gate, giving uh, the final output G. Okay, so I've built uh, an OR gate here and an XOR gate on the same uh, test bench. And since they're pretty much similar uh, in their wiring and in their operation, we're going to be looking at them both at the same time. So we have our input A here, input B uh, next to it. So input A is going into this NOT gate here. B is going into this NOT gate right here. The output of B is going into this NAND gate on top here as the first input. The output of our first NOT gate is going into the second input of this NAND gate. And its output is going straight to the LED. So that completes our OR gate. Now if we extend the wires uh, to the second part here, so you have A coming here on the yellow wire, not A uh, following this purple wire, B is the green one, and not B is the red one. So you can see that you have A and not B going into this first NAND gate here, then not A, not A and B going into the second NAND gate, 
both of these fed into a third one and its output goes to the LED. So that completes uh, the XOR circuit. So let's plug this in and see how it behaves. So, so far so good. We're getting results uh, that we uh, expect uh, considering the truth table that we looked at before. So both A and B are off. Both outputs are off. Now let's turn on A. And we can see that both outputs uh, turn on uh, for the OR gate and as well as the XOR gate. If we press B, we should get similar results. And indeed, that's what happens. As long as we keep pressing only A or only B, we have the same results. Now, if we press both at the same time, we can see that uh, the output of the OR gate is on, but the XOR gate is off. So with that, uh, we've done uh, if we want uh, the, 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 the turn of all the different uh, logic gates that we're going to be uh, looking at. And this is also uh, the last time that we're going to be building, uh, for demonstration purposes, um, logic gates uh, completely uh, out of NAND gates. So as you might expect, there are chips that can do NOT operations and operations or operations or XOR operations uh, natively and uh, this is what we're going to be looking at in the last part of this video so I'm going to tear this down and build a little demonstration uh, using those specific chips and then uh, we'll come back and talk a bit about them okay so what I've done here is uh, place a sampling of different uh, logic chips on our test bench here one for each of the logic gates that we have looked at so far. So on the left here, I have an SN74HC04 chip, which provides six NOT gates. Then there's an SN74HC00 chip, so the NAND gate chip that we've seen before. SN74HC08, which has four AND gates. SN74HC32, which has four OR gates, and SN74HC68, which has four XOR gates. So uh, what I've done here is I've connected my inputs A and B to each of the chips using the top uh, right uh, gate in each of them. I've also connected the LED to the output and to a resistor. A bit differently for the NOT chip, I've used only uh, my input A because there's only one input to the NOT. So if I turn this on, so we have inputs 0 and 0. So NOT 0 is 1, 0 NAND 0 is 1, 0 AND 0 is 0, 0 OR 0 is 0 and 0 x or 0 is also 0. Now if we press on A we have uh, not 1 so it's now 0 we have 1 and uh, 1 NAND 0 excuse me is 1 1 AND 0 is 0 1 OR 0 is 1 and 1 x or 0 is also 1. So if we press on B now, we should get the same result as when we pressed on A with the exception of this uh, LED here which should not change because B is not connected to this one. So uh, as we can see we got the same result. And finally we'll press both buttons and now uh, we'll skip the NOT gate because uh, it's the same case we've seen before. We will we'll have 1 NAND 1 is 0, 1 AND 1 is 1, 1 OR 1 is 1, and 1 X OR 1 is 0. So there you have it. We have all uh, the logic gates that we've seen so far. We've all built them uh, using uh, NAND gates directly from scratch. 
and now it's time to move on and use uh, directly the proper chips in order to keep our design simpler and easier to understand so we're going to be using a few of these chips in our end uh, design for our project sometimes I will use uh, NAND gates to do uh, everything just to uh, stick uh, with the spirit of the book and sometime when space is limited I will use uh, native chips I think I will, uh, will be using an AND chip and an OR chip and it's, it's useful to uh, also uh, understand that some cases in some cases it's useful to use an AND chip to uh, make a different logic gate because uh, it helps you to save some space so let's say you're making uh, uh, a little circuit and you need one NOT gate and one AND gate well, instead of buying and using one uh, 7404 chip and one 7408 chip, you can use one 7400 chip and make your own AND gate and make your own NOT gate from that and uh, save some space on your board and some money also. So knowing how to make these things uh, can be useful but uh, normally you will be using the correct chips to do uh, what you want to do uh, because it makes it uh, a lot simpler to create your, your project or your design and also to debug it uh, when uh, something is not going well. So in our next video we'll start to take a look at the ALU. See you soon! <laughs>